wrinkled woman does not greet you. She nods <coughs> you to something on her radio. A photograph is clutched in her hands and there is a warm smile on her face. The photo, an ambrotype from the turn of the century, as golden as her smile. Excuse me, ma'am, I would like to ask you some questions. No response. Wherever this woman is, your words fail to reach her. I'm sorry, I hate to do it, but I'm gonna try and snap my fingers in front of her face. No Oops. response. Wait. She's just a distracted old woman. Better to leave her alone. Why? Why? I just told you why. If you say so. The woman still has. Man. Give me your fucking up my style. Cramping my style, I should say. A lorry stuck in the traffic jam. This big, heavy, grad made machine is well kept for such an old machine. The windows are clear. They've been recently washed. You can see a lorry man's cabin with personal belongings, stickers, insignia. Fumes of heavy fuel oil waft over you, making your eyes sting. The odor mixes with cigarette residue. What about the back seat? The back end of the cabin has a small perch to sleep, large ashtrays. There are several suns and wheels sewn into the curtains. A book with ragged edges catches your notice. The front cover features a large muscular man. The title reads, <coughs> Men from Eelndal in the lost city of the Pygmies. Racist nationalist paraphernalia. Not unusual in this part of town. This is our guy. You think the lorry belongs to our tough guy? Likely, yes. This guy is proud of who he is. Drapes it all over his machine. He was acting tough before. This probably scared him a bit. Who knows where it will come in handy? A slightly scared, racist lorry man. What kind of stickers in his senior? The driver has adorned his space with a substantial collection of peculiar paraphernalia. Proclamations about honor, strength, and purity are glued to various panels. A large metal pendant hangs from the rear view mirror. The pendant features a sun crown with wavy rays. some more trash the tear machines your bottles clunk into the machine and do you know what you should do with that money kiddo you should buy more alcohol enter the endless cycle of consumption mm, maybe not now but I mean it's not a bad idea Still here, stuck in this damn jam, my man. What's up? You just spare some change for working stuff? Huh? Oh, no, I ain't got any money. They don't want to pay for unfinished work. They who? The bosses, man. I don't know who these bosses think they are, but that sounds like a good arrangement for them. Yeah, it sure ain't good for me. Or you. <clears throat> I'd spare a corner two for a city cop down in his luck. If I had, say, four myself. Tell me more about this strike. It's like, whatever's going on over at the docks. Workers got a blockade set up, making demands. No way in or out. 
What's the union demanding? Some pretty wild stuff, I hear. Like a giant new power crane in half the company? I forget what exactly. Good on them, I guess. I've heard talk there's a company rep in town, too. Like, a strike negotiator type. They know what's up. Precise demands and so on. What do you think the company wants? They want to keep that money flowing in, my man. ka -ching. He doesn't blame them, but he's not on their side. That's for sure. Anything else I should know? Anything else? Yeah, this ain't really my area of expertise. I just do my job and get paid. I have things to do and places to be. All of us do. Who of who? Us lorry drivers. Cam, your nurse. You still hang around here waiting for this mess to end. Most have scurried off somewhere to get drunk or high. Or laid. Not that I blame them, really. Not you. Not my thing. Chasing transient pleasures is a drag these days. I prefer the examined life now. Thinking, reflecting, observing. What's better than chasing transient pleasures? The more transient, the better. When one's ended, you can get on to the next one. That's all for now. Bye. <clears throat> Yes. Tell me about the case. What do you want <clears throat> to know? Literally anything about it. I can't remember a single thing. Ah, yes. The case brief you missed. Now I remember. Brief, yes. That sounds good. Three days ago, the RCA <coughs> emergency desk received a report about a security guard who was found hanged in Martinez. An anonymous caller said there was a dead body behind the whirling in Rags hostel cafeteria. The cadaver had been there for four days. No one had come to investigate. During that time, the victim had been stripped of his belongings. The caller did not identify him, but used the word lynching. There is an ongoing labor dispute between the local dock workers and the logistics company Wild Pines. I was told we should approach the death as part of this dispute. Why didn't you know anything about the caller? They didn't identify themselves in any way. The tone was muffled using a device of some sort. The desk could identify neither the caller's age nor sex. Why hide themselves? There is a strong prejudice against involving the RCM in what's seen as union matters. The Dock Workers Union is the de facto police in Martinez. Now it appears they've started executing too. We cannot allow that. Of course, yes, I understand everything Just now. To be clear, <clears throat> we are police officers. It's our job to find the killer. That's the case. Uncover and arrest the killer. Actually, I have one for now. Uh, I want to talk about you. Me? Yes, you. I don't see how my life is pertinent to the investigation. Well, we'll work together if we have more effort. Or sorry, we'll work better together if we have more effort. Mm, that's a fair point. All right, for the good of the investigation, what do you want to know? Do you ever talk with yourself? What do you mean? You know, when you're thinking, do you have conversations with like your brain? I have no idea what you're talking about. The lieutenant's conceptualization skills must be rather rudimentary. you are saying your brain never just Chimes in with advice or warnings or anything. I can't say that it does, no. When I need to think, I just use my notebook. The lieutenant produces his small blue notebook and idly thumbs through a few pages. We all have our different mediums. His is written. You're super lucid, yet psychedelic. 
You don't need office supplies to connect to your nervous system. You're special. I'm not sick about no. yourself. <sighs> your brain sends the signal to your lips, but they refuse the order. Something is paralyzing them. You're pretty sure it has something to do with the lieutenant's eyebrow. What's happening to me? Something the matter, detect. What's going on? It's like you're a puppet in his hands. The lieutenant relaxes his eyebrow, and you seem to regain control. No. Can I try this again? Your brain sends the signal to your lips, but they refuse the order. Something is something the matter. What's going on? Okay, it's we'll, like you're a puppet. We'll try this. Later. Hold well, on, I don't think we ever have too much authority. <laughs> you seem to regain control of yourself. You're wearing glasses. That's correct. That makes him a Bino clad. Completely uncocked material, if you say so yourself. I'm not gonna call him a Bino glass, they're cool. Are they? They are mostly just cumbersome. Ah, uh, listen, I don't wanna say it, but I wanna. You don't look like other people That's around because here. I'm half sailite or quarter. My father's father was from Seoul, so was my grandmother, but from my mother's side. It's not an interesting topic. What is Seoul? It's a part of the world, officer. A geopolitical entity and a geographic division. I told you it wouldn't be interesting. Seoul is a protectionist, isolationist, pan isolary state west of the Insulindian Isola. Actually, it's quite interesting. Some would even say mysterious. You're only making it sound uninteresting. I still want to know more about Seoul. You're barking up the wrong tree. I don't speak a word of Seolite. I've never met either one of my grandparents, and I've never been to Seoul. I'm a regular Revachelier. Good. So Let's change the subject. I think you know that I can't remember anything. No response. He's having trouble processing it, believing it even. I really don't remember anything that I was drinking involved. Have you tried concentrating on something other than your personal affairs? There is a sudden, harsh edge to his voice, like he's tired of hearing about your personal affairs. What's wrong with personal affairs? It's just the nature of lieutenancy. The RCM deploys a self-styled structure called the Decomtage as its chain of command. Every lieutenant is responsible for two sergeants and eight officers. That's a lot. That means the average lieutenant has to deal with quite a few personal affairs. Even you know this. What should I concentrate Try on? Try work. The case at hand. It can work miracles. I'm afraid this... No. Fine. Focus on other people's troubles, not your- Your heart beats twice like a fist. The serotonin deficiency makes your teeth clench. The lieutenant glances at his electronic wristwatch. Okay, forget it. A moment passes. The lieutenant glances at You seem at to be following me. Excuse me? Nothing, just no observation. You have a... a distinctive way of walking. If I were to walk in front of you, we would surely collide. What do you mean distinctive? I hope you don't take this the wrong way. It's just a collegial observation. In the 57th, we call it the Jamrock Shuffle. Officers from Jamrock's 41st precinct tend to move a bit erratically. How's that? They say it's a scene clearing <coughs> developed by one of your lieutenants for gathering evidence. It's erratic yet thorough. Prioritizes containers. Okay then. He simply nods. Real good chat. Okay, what else do we want to do?
Mm -hmm. I think I'm gonna talk to Joyce again. <clears throat> We stop. Kim, stop being such a nerd. Oh, why is that blue? Interesting. <coughs> <coughs> help you with I talked to Everett Claire you have and how did you like Mr. Claire finally time to choose sides it's not important if I liked him I was doing my job of course detective Excuse me for implying otherwise. <clears throat> the RCM does not pick sides in this. I hope it doesn't come off any other way. Of course. And I don't expect you to share anything he told you with me. I am not a corrupt verm myself. However, if you felt like discussing something, how could I stop you? Are we not human? Are we not curious to hear another person's take? It's only natural. We would only be... gossiping. Intellectually speaking, it would be quite interesting to hear what she has to say about these things. Tell her she'll like you for it. That money you gave me, would that make things weird if I shared information, I mean? Weird? Oh no. One of the positive things to come from the revolution is the unhindered exchange of information you see even when it comes to trade secrets which isn't to suggest our talks constitute corporate espionage even if they did it would be fine but they don't since you logged the money as a donation and this is clearly just gossip between friends the lieutenant might have but i don't remember you logging anything as anything harry I should talk about something else for now, if you don't mind. Of course, detective. Should something come up later down the road, don't be afraid to drop by for a chat. Until then, is there anything I can help you with? Okay, tell me about this alleged drug it's trafficking. It's quite straightforward. Someone is using Terminal B to smuggle raw ingredients from the Samaran Isola into Revachol with the Union's blessing. Wild Pines has suspected it for years. Ingredients for what, ma'am? Meth and dextroamphetamine, GBL and various synthetic psychedelics. Honestly, it might be quicker to say what you can't make from the stuff. Shit, yeah, baby. It's the party pipeline. Why would you want to shut that down? Let me get this straight. The materials come from Samara to Revashore through the terminal. Yes. After we <coughs> clear the terminal, we lose track. The actual production is taking place at various sites in and around Jamrock Quarter, north of here. Wild Pine seems to be well apprised of the local drug trade, man. Do you mean to say the Union also produces the product? Sells drugs, I mean? We're in logistics. It's our business to know. And no. As far as the company knows, the Union does not produce it. They transport the ingredients. For a cut. You want us to investigate? Yes, but you won't get anything out of Everard and the Dock Workers Union. Still, every chain has its weak link. The handoff. 
the motor lorries at the roundabout. The lorries. Precisely. Someone needs to move the ingredients from the harbor into the city. Once they reach Jamrock, they're distributed to a network of local manufacturers well beyond our grasp. But in transit, they're vulnerable. How convenient that they're stranded like beached whales at that roundabout. Perhaps you've noticed that a number of lorries are tangled in a traffic jam at the roundabout just now. Interview the drivers who are still <coughs> hanging about. One of them might be waiting for a crucial shipment. Her irises are light green. Like the river Esperance in bright daylight, upstream where it's clearer. I'll be explicit. If you find this driver, I will share company secrets with you.